In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Dear brothers and sisters in Christ, happy Feast of the Epiphany to you all. Today's feast, I guess, could be summed up in four words. God's revelation to man. We could say God became man so that we could become divine. He became like us, for us. Or we can personalize it and say, He became like me, for me. In the Gospel today, we heard the dialogue between the Magi and King Herod. Both were seeking for the Christ child, but obviously for two very different reasons. We hear about Herod in the New Testament a few times. Have you ever wondered? Have you ever wondered how many Herods are there? Is it just the one guy, Herod the Great, who keeps popping up every time? In fact, there are four different Herods in the New Testament. The first one we heard today is called Herod the Great. I don't know why they on earth they gave him the title the great and we heard we heard about him in today's gospel and the second is herod antipas who had saint john the baptist beheaded and he was present during our lord's passion the third herod is herod agrippa the first a nephew of King Herod the Great. And Agrippa I is the one who executed the Apostle Saint James and imprisoned Saint Peter. We read these events in the Acts of the Apostles. And the fourth is his son, Herod Agrippa II. And it was before him that Saint Paul answered Jewish accusations when he was in prison in Caesarea. Herod had a great persecution complex. He was notorious for his cruelty. Would he believe that he killed over half of his ten wives? He killed some of his own children and many people of standing. So hopefully this gives us an idea of who Herod and uh, all his family uh, their, their characters, so to speak. Now we come to the Magi, also known as wise men or three kings. They were pagans, in other words, they were non Jews, or sometimes they're referred to as Gentiles. But they were learned, they were learned men, probably from Persia, who devoted themselves to the study of the stars. And it's very interesting to see that God made use of these ideas to draw these Gentiles to Christ. God called them with the means of things they are most familiar with. And he shows them, he shows them a large and extraordinary star. So they would be impressed by its size and beauty. God called the Magi during their ordinary occupations. And Magi are not the only people. There are so many, even in the Old Testament. We take Moses, for example. God called Moses when he was shepherding his flock. Let's take Elisha, Elisha the prophet, while he was plowing the land. Or take prophet Amos. He was looking after his herd. And the same thing happens in the New Testament. We read how God called Peter, Andrew, James and John beside their nets. And Matthew, tax collector, sitting in the customs office. And I would say the wonders of wonders, God called Saul, as we know now him, St. Paul, in his eagerness to destroy the seed of Christianity. Isn't that wonderful? God keeps showing up in our workplace, in ordinary occupations. As we go about our daily activities, God is there calling us. Like the Magi, we too have discovered a star, haven't we? 
a light and a guide in the sky of our soul. But again, it might happen in our lives that the star disappears, just as it did to the wise kings on their journey. So what should we do when this happens? We don't have to go and consult Herod, thank God, nor the wise men of this world. The good news is Christ has given his church sureness of doctrine and a flow of grace in the sacraments. In the church, there will always be people to guide us, lead us, and to remind us constantly of our way to salvation. So what could we learn from these wise men? Matthew, the author of the, the gospel uh, writer, Matthew's gospel we just heard this evening, we don't know, he doesn't tell us how long the Magi have been traveling. It could have taken them several weeks. They could have been on the road perhaps for months. We don't know. But like the Magi, we too have something in common with the Magi, don't we? We too are on our journey. Each one of us, we too are on our journey to see God face to face. And again, we don't know how long the journey will be. So let us keep an eye on the star so that we don't lose our way. Amen. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen.